go. Um, hi everybody. This is my daughter Robin. And you know that I have talked about um, religious trauma in my life and um, I wanted her to be able to share some of her story because tonight I heard her speaking with her grandfather on the phone and I was highly impressed at the emotional um, maturity she was displaying. So um, I've already talked a little bit about my point of view um, with religion and everybody's point of view is different. And I wanted to show how even in a family, it, it affects people differently. So I'll give a little bit of a timeline. Um, I was raised in Christianity till I was like 30 and I started coming out of it at that point. Um, what's your earliest religious memory? Uh, it had to have been either at the, uh, the church that grandpa and grandma used to run um, or sitting on the second of the three bed bunk beds that dad and grandpa made. <laughs> um, sitting on the second one of those and asking God to turn her. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, um, I grew up in religion with my whole family teaching me it from, you know, young child to adult. But we transitioned out of religion um, as a family, and then each kid got to make their own decision, um, which they would probably say I was biased against religion, and they might be right. <laughs> We've got a mix, but I wanted Robin to be able to give her um, point of view, and tell me about the time that you started thinking outside of religion. Like, when did you start thinking, like, huh, maybe... When I heard that there was a being out there who loved me and controlled everything, um, it got me thinking that, I mean, when I look up at the sky, there's an infinite distance that that direction goes. There's so much out there. Um, and when I think about the possibility when I think about the possibility of a, a God existing, uh, uh, there's just, there's so many, so many questions that I have. Um, I mean, people talk about God existing as like a large white man with a beard, um, specific people. Some people uh, talk about God being a goddess. Um, but I, I remember just questioning reality itself. Um, if there's another side to everything, then I'm on this side. What's over there? And how does it intertwine with the life that I'm living? Um, and when I just started, when I started to think about. Um, in particular, in, in particular in my family, the uh, stigmas and um, things that were said to be sinful or wrong, um, it, it just didn't, it didn't really resonate with me. It seemed too broadly based, too, I mean, in a sense, politically based. I mean, marginalizing groups is, is, is huge in, for America. Um, and I know that America is not the only place that that type of thinking exists, but I mean, I, so that's where my thinking comes from. Um, yeah, that's... Do you remember how old you were when you, um, first started having those kind of thoughts? I remember being like seven or eight. It's not a little bit younger. I remember sitting in the parking lot with Uncle Mark uh, just like for hours and like late into the night just like talking about philosophical uh, ideas, ideas of what things are and the questions that I had. Where did we live at when that was going on? Mm, I think we still lived at that point. 
uh, Mark now. Mm -hmm. um, my earliest memory of Robin questioning was when she was four, and we lived at the um, we lived at a real small spec house that we had built or built bought bought as it was being built, and. Uh, there was a big field behind us that was basically just like undeveloped ground and she sat and she stared out that window one night. She was four years old and she looked at me and she said, Mom, if Jesus is bigger than the world, how does he fit in our hearts? <laughs> and I was like, wow, you are so like deep thinking. You're four years old and you're asking me this question. <laughs> like, wow. I didn't have an answer. I, I didn't. And at that point, um, I think, I'm trying to think, it's, well, I have to remember how old I was. I'm 45 now. You're 20, you're about Four. to be 25 though, right? Very young. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, backtrack 21 years. So I was 24 at that point and I was still very deeply entrenched in the religion. So it was definitely, um, an interesting question and stuck in my head. <laughs> So she was four when she started questioning. Um, and uh, let's see, I, I kind of want to stay on track here. So tonight, the conversation that I heard her having with her grandfather, um, yeah, I think we're going to have to keep Jesse this camera. That's because we're not pros, but that's okay. <laughs> um, how, first of all, let me just say I was highly impressed with the there, there wasn't even a control to your demeanor it was just very open and compassionate and conversational and like giving you were just expressing yourself and asking him to express himself and you were asking um, him to say you know how did he feel when he was your age? You're trying to draw a parallel of how, you know, your thinking at 24 can be different than your thinking at however old he is, like 62 or whatever. Um, and how you wanted him to consider that your viewpoint now may not be your viewpoint when you get older and can't he just love you for who you are now. Um, what was your goal for this conversation with him tonight? My goal tonight was just to be able to go up there and make that protest. Um, I, I thought about um, following a, a possible suggestion, the suggestion that you and Sky gave me earlier, going over there and just not paying attention to them when I say here um, that they're mean. And um, really, that's it. I just wanted. I. It turned into me not being willing to accept that, um, and at one point he was talking about uh, upholding standards for his house and he was telling me that I couldn't come. Um, and I was telling him that, okay, um, well, I, I'm not going to budge either. I need to hold, I need to uphold my own standards of self-respect. And um, all I wanted was for him to not call me anything. Like, if he could just not use pronouns. Or not, and not use my dead name. He d I don't need him to call me she or Robin. Just don't like, don't say that part. And it's been, I came out, of, I came out like at 18 or 19, in like five, six years. From what I remember, you were 17 um, because it was midway through your senior year. Or maybe yeah. even like two months into your senior year. It wasn't. It was actually the third day of senior year. Was it really? It was the it, third I day. I knew it wasn't too long. I came in wearing a skirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a, in a small town in Midwestern Ohio where uh, there is n there are not a lot of progressives. Not a lot at all. It's very podunk. <laughs> it was scary. <laughs> and like people were taking pictures of me and shit and sending them to other schools. I'm sure. I'm sure to some extent I'm still talked about. Yeah, she was literally the talk of the town. <laughs> Apparently. Um, I didn't hear it really. People were just like talking to me about it. I mean, some people did, but not out and about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was quite the interesting time. Um, 
a uh, little bit of background when she came out I do remember um, her saying mom I have to talk to you um, and she wanted me to come downstairs to her bedroom and I thought well she sounds serious like I don't know what's going on you know um, she had come out at 12 as gay attracted to boys and I was like huh wait I, the only thing I could imagine, I said, are you like telling me that you're no longer attracted to boys or like you're attracted to girls now? And do you remember what you said to me? I do. I do. Um, I remember I said uh, for three years at that point, I had just had this overwhelming and deep seated desire to, to carry a child. other part at that point. I just knew I wanted to carry a kid. I remember talking about that and just being confused by it. And um, I remember you asked me, are, are you a girl? Do you feel you're a girl? And I, I was feminine at that point, but I didn't like let myself go or anything. I still held this specific, like specific um, masculine, um, clothing and shit, and shit like that, um, but. I don't remember talking about the, um, wanting to carry a child at that point. I remember asking you, are you attracted to girls or something? And you said, no, I am one. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what I remember. What am I to remember of this wrong? <laughs> And, and that's kind of my point with this video is that everybody has their own like point of view and everybody has their own um, perception of things. And, you know, Robin really, when she was talking to her grandfather on the phone tonight, she really um, held true to that. And she allowed him to have his point of view and she was, just asked him, you know, do you think that you could possibly just respect that we are different right now? And, you know, don't say, you know, don't use male pronouns, don't use my dead name, but you don't have to say she and you don't have to say Robin, just don't say anything, just be together as family. And there was no desperation in her voice, there was no coercion, it was just very authentically raw, just, this is what I want. Do you think you can do this, Grandpa? And um, so I was just really impressed with the way that she handled the phone call and when he got ready to hang up um i gave her a big hug and told her how proud i was of her and um so he he said to you that he would make a decision and call you back right no he said let me call you back <laughs> okay that's fine yeah he just said let me call you back and then took a good like 40 minutes i don't know something like that no, I'm glad that's looking at you. That's cool while okay. you're talking because sure. <laughs> um, so he then he said 40 minutes. Dang. What are you thinking during that time? I was just like, at first I thought he was talking with everyone and then it turned out he was. And he was like, I could have gotten everyone together, but I didn't. So I just got your Uncle Tim, Uncle Mark, Dad, and Jesse. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, Grandpa had about one person there to support him, um, and I, th I don't think it would have mattered. If I, everyone was against him, that wouldn't have mattered? I don't think so. I think, um, I think he's just incredibly sure of himself, unbreakably, unwaveringly sure of himself. So how was your emotional state during the time that you were waiting to hear back from him? What were you feeling and thinking? I was like sitting there hoping that he would just say it, meaning that because he really wanted to sit there and think about it, that meant he was actually considering it. Um, and it was that, I, I was hopeful. Um, 
but I also wasn't really worried because I wasn't able to go over there. And uh, I was okay, not going over there at all. And then I dropped Sky off over there, and I was like, I could be sitting here right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I came back, and I was alone for a second, and I was definitely feeling down. But. Yeah. <sighs> this is so hard to watch um, my ex-in-laws do this to my kids. Um, and to particular Robin, because they really aren't doing it to any of the other ones. Um, they have, done, they have, but currently most of the other kids are straight, cis. Um, there have been variations in the past, I'll say, without exposing any of my other children. Um, and they have been persecuted at those times. Um, I just think it's really awful that grandparents will shun one grandchild out of how many, 15 they have now or something. And it, they're doing it as an example to all of the other grandchildren that you won't be accepted if you are trans, if you're gay. Um, and I know for a fact they have other gay grandchildren and um, I don't know how when those people come out, you know, how that's going to go. It's probably going to go the same. Um, I'm highly disappointed in their character and the fact that they can't be respectful of their granddaughter and at least just hang out with her and not even say her or she, like, we're not asking them to compromise that, but, um, so talking about this and knowing that other people are going to be listening and thinking about it, reflecting on their own experiences. How are you feeling at the moment? You know, or even just in the aftermath of what happened tonight, how are you feeling? I just want to say that to anyone who has someone in their life who is identifying as trans or saying that they're questioning their gender or that they are wondering whether or not um, they're questioning anything, anything about themselves. If they're, if they like the style, if they like goth style, or whatever, whatever it is that this person is fine is questioning. Are there some things that I could say to anyone out there who has someone in their life who's questioning some things about them? If it's a phase, okay. Uh, if it's something that they really feel and that is pertinent and consistent over a period, long period of time, regardless of whether or not it's for now or forever, if that person's asking for your support now, and it, it means the world, someone a different name or by other pronouns. No, no one's asking for an overnight change. Just try. Just yeah. respect. Yeah, I, I know that, um, you know, there are other people, well, we'll just, we'll skip that, but like, um, one of the things that Robin has always made sure to tell people is, that um, she really just wants them to try. Like, don't just give up on it and say, oh, it's too hard. I, you know, I've known you as this other person for so long. She's not I mean, a different I have, person. I have people frequently saying things like dude or uh, just things that, terms that are, are gender specific but are meant in a more broad term, a broad way. And people apologize for that, which I appreciate the intention. But I, I don't even need you to apologize when you call. If you call me by the, uh, the name, the wrong name, 
I, I don't need you to apologize for that as long as you are attempting, or if I if I um, correct you, just saying the right name then. Or correcting some yourself. Some kind of sign, or correcting yourself. Yeah, it's... No one's asking anyone else to be perfect. At least I hope not. <laughs> They're asking for too much if they are. For the most part, I don't think people are. And I think that, that you know, for you especially, like, you're very compassionate towards everyone in general. And um, I truly appreciate that about you. And, um, you know, I, I just wanted to highlight that um, despite how people have treated her, she has continued to grow emotionally and um, just continued to tell, uh, tell me again what you were, uh, you told your grandpa tonight about, he said something about, you know, he, he wants to respect his Lord at his house. Um, and you said, well, that's, he said, can you respect my God? And you said, well, that's not my God. My God is. Oh yeah. He was talking about, um, uh, the deity that he follows, the Christian God. And I told him that my God isn't the type of God that you would think of. It's, it's goodness. It's helping people. It's thinking a little less of yourself and a little more of others and just trying to make the best that, that you can. Making the world, for me, it's making the world a better place than I found it. I appreciate that. How do you want to approach your grandparents in the future? How do you feel after tonight? Like, what do you think is going to be, um, the way you want to, do you want to approach seeing if you can go over there again? Or like, I don't know, I guess I'm asking a more general question. Like, how do you want to approach the whole subject with them in the future? Like, let's say you see them at one of your siblings gatherings. Um, well, honestly, the only place that they think they're really, really, um, adamant about uh, most of this in particular is at their house. At Savannah's birthday party, or what was someone's birthday party? Someone's birthday party at a campground. They didn't say anything. It wasn't their house. Did they talk to you? Party. They talked to me the whole time. Oh, wow. And didn't say either, which shocks me that if they can just do that for a birthday party, why can't they just do that to have me around? To have their grand grandkid around. Oh, man. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I know that every single person coming into every situation has their own days, weeks, months, and years leading up to that very point. Everyone does. Um, and so every situation needs to be considered with a whole, a more holistic truth considered from every person's angle. Um, I, just, I don't know. I'll continue to stay where I am. Just need to ask that they, that they don't use your dead name or male pronouns. Um, I, the very, very few times that I do talk to them, I just, um, I just put up with it. It's been over the phone. So, uh, I just continue the conversation and let that part be the sake of the conversation happening yeah so um you know i'm thinking about doing a series of these um podcast style interviews and maybe they won't all be on camera um but i just wanted to let people see firsthand how it affects someone when people in their family reject them, how painful it is. And um, I know that tonight Robin's dad said to her grandfather, you know, well, even Christ sat with the sinners. Like if, she, if, if he's gonna believe that she's a sinner for being who she is, for being transgender, um, 
then can he even do you know what Christ did? That's supposed to be what he's following. But um, I don't know what the exact response to that was, but I know it wasn't it wasn't taken uh, the way it was meant to be. Um, so um, that's frustrating and painful. And um, I just want to encourage people to do better. And um, if you know anybody that could benefit from seeing this video and um, not, you know, maybe they don't know someone transgender in their family, um, Robin would really like to be at Christmas with her cousins and her siblings. You know, um, I don't know how many of them were over there today, but there's probably about 15 or 20 total. Um, and she's the only one sitting home with me who you know when I told them that I didn't believe how they do anymore they told me it was like it was I was dead to them and that's basically how they're treating Robin and that's excruciating and maddening and as a mom I want to smack them <laughs> to be honest but um, I wouldn't um, there was a time where I loved them very much as parents, um, but it was really painful for them to completely disown me. I had been their daughter since I was 14 years old, and Robin has been their grandchild since she was born, and her grandmother was always at our house helping me um, up until the point where I left their religion. So. Um, you know, one of the things her grandma really used to say was that, you know, family was more important than anything. And I think that that should be the case. I don't think religion should trump family. But that's just my point of view. So um, I just want to close up here and just... Um, I don't know, do you have any parting words for anybody? <sighs> I, <laughs> I wish I did. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Alright, take care.